Welcome to Manif 2015's Inside the Filmmaker Studio. Our guests this morning have been working in the industry for 13 years as actors, producers, writers and directors. Their production company, Biz and Ginger Films, is going from strength to strength, producing films such as Missing Her Teens, EGAD Zombies and tonight's UK premiere, Two Down. Go see it, it's brilliant. Having already worked with the likes of Stephen Fry, Sir Derek Jacobi and Sir Ian McKellen, this writing team are beginning to live up to Screen International's 2013 accolade of Stars of Tomorrow. The Filmmaker Studio is very proud to welcome the dynamic screenwriting partnership of Matthew Butler and Tori Hart. Clap. Thank you. <laughs> Clap. Thank you and welcome to Manif's very first, as you can tell because we're still working out all the technical glitches, Filmmaker Studio. Now this showcase has been designed to delve into the perils and lessons to learn of all that is independent film. But before that, let's start at the very beginning. Tori, where were you born? I was born in Oxford. And Matt? Uh, Sh Shrewsbury in Shropshire, which is a real place. <laughs> no one's heard of it. And where did you both go to school? I went to a very small all-girls school uh, near Oxford in a small town called Banbury. Okie dokie. Uh, I went to various places but ended up in uh, not far from here uh, called Fian's High School. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how was school? Good. I had a great time. Um, I was at boarding school so I spent most of my time locked in there for being caught smoking and drinking and sneaking out when I wasn't meant to be. Uh, so yeah, I had a, I had a great time. <laughs> Didn't learn that much. <laughs> uh, my, well, mine was sort of interesting. Um, wasn't much to do. It's either sort of sports or that was about it, which is how all this kind of started. I was like, well, I'm in a rainy valley, the rainiest valley in England, I think. Um, so let's write some knowledge. Skip. Yeah, I know, I know. So, um, so was it sort of at school that your interest in filmmaking and film began? For me, yes, because there was so little to do and we watched all the kind of Blackadder, Bottom, that kind of comedy sketch stuff. Um, me and a couple of friends, we just started writing sketches to amuse ourselves and demanded that our friends watched us. <laughs> um, and so it was mo most kind of sketch comedy stuff. And then when we could borrow our friend's uh, uncle's camera, we'd come and video, so, well, make little really, really bad short films. So that's and what you, I did. <laughs> and you, sorry, did your interest in begin at school? Um, I think uh, certainly for theatre, we, we didn't really, I mean, we didn't have that much of a sort of theatre department, uh, certainly no film at all at school. Um, but that's definitely where I first sort of knew that I wanted to be an actress and sort of pursue that path. Very good. So how did you two meet? Well... <laughs> 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 um, I, uh, after I left drama school, um, I started a theatre company with my dad, uh, who was very passionate about 18th and 17th and 18th century theatre and plays. And so uh, we put on a production of The Rivals by Sheridan, and uh, Matt auditioned for one of the roles, which I didn't give him and no. gave to someone else. And then uh, that actor got a better job. Uh, a better paid job. <laughs> better paid job. Yeah. Um, and so couldn't do it. So I had to call up Matt uh, very humbly and said, uh, I'm really sorry. When I said that we thought we'd go another way, actually what we meant was yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we think you're great. And would you still <laughs> <laughs> like to do it? And uh, I didn't have a job at the time. So. such a nice man. He said, yes, of course I would. How did you feel, Matt, when you got that phone call? Though, so, uh, I mean, to be—I mean, I've—I've I've been around for quite. A while. I know how it all sort of works. It's never sort of personal, although I think this one was. But <laughs> <laughs> one of the other girls auditioning at the time fancied this guy. Is that right? Yeah, um, it was yeah. very professional. It was, yeah, it was your first first theatre job. Yeah, so I mean, no, I mean, it's that's how the business works. It's not generally personal. So I was like, yeah, brilliant. Okay, brilliant. Just to, just to take it into sort of the, the realm of filmmaking, sort of where do your ideas, you know, where do they come from? I mean, you're, you know, EGAD Zombie, where was sort of the initial seeds for that? Well, that was... While we so were that, doing the play. Yeah, well, that was a different play. I think I was dire directing That's one of the right, plays yeah. for your company at the time. And I think we were in the middle of an actual performance. And then this was an 18th century, you know, wigs, um, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then I'm not a massive kind of zombie fan. Particularly, but then I had this sort of weird image of all these people 
in these amazing costumes, but going, oh, there you go, that's a film, surely. Um, so we kind of chatted about it whilst we were on tour with the play. And then we just sort of developed a gab zombies. And it, yeah. the 18th century plays have kind of pretty standard story. Stock you know, there's characters kind of stock as characters well. And so, things. Like, so we just sort of took that and put it in a kind of zombie-esque sort of comedy world. So that became a 20 minute um, sort of short film. Yeah. Got Ian McKellen in bed with a zombie, which is always good. <laughs> <laughs> and change it, well, going from that now, obviously, to your main feature, which premieres here tonight at Manif, uh, to Down, where were the seeds of that? Well, you know, where did the initial idea come from? Um, well, we, we wanted to, after doing sort of um, a few short films, we sort of wanted to, to sort of take the leap, as it were, and, um, and, and do a feature um, and write a feature. But what we knew it had to be was very low, low budget. Um, and in order to do that, we needed to make sure that the script was containable. So we sort of set ourselves the kind of challenge of writing a script with basically three characters in one room. Um, and that's Which sort is really of where hard. It, yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> really, really hard. Uh, and uh, yeah, we sort of realised that actually during the writing process that it was becoming more of a play script, really, rather than a film script. And so we... Um, uh, knew that we had to kind of bring it out um, a bit and kind of expand it. That's sort of as the characters grew though, because we always start with kind of finding an interesting, or interesting characters, see what story they, they have to tell, and that kind of dictates. So with, with our three main people, they, their story sort of expanded, and we went, we can't contain them in this one room to yeah. properly tell their story. So we had to expand it, bring in other people, and show more backstory and that sort of stuff. So it, yeah. And also to sort of lend it to be more cinematic. Yeah, at the end of the day, film is the visual medium and three people in a room is really hard to, you know, do. Polanski yeah. did it with, you know, Carnage. But that was based on a play, you know. <laughs> yeah. And the Selma, Hay Selma Hayek film, I think, coming out, where yeah. it's all in one room, but that's action, so yeah, it's a visual. I think so. it's still the challenge. With, with sort of, as we, I think, grow and, and learn as writers, hopefully. Mm. You know, we, we might get there. So could you just quickly take us through your writing process? You make it sound like it's almost, and I hate to use this cliche, an organic process, you know, of these Ooh. characters developing. <laughs> but can you just take us through this, uh, you know? Well, it's, it's different every time, to be yeah. honest. Um, I mean, because we obviously we started doing short films to learn, you know, because we both trained as actors. Hmm. Um, and even though I've been making short films since I was sort of 14 or so, we didn't have the formal film training. So we specifically went out to learn how that all worked. Yeah. Um, so we were doing short films from different genres. So we did sort of French New Wave one. I mean, it's all kind of parody slightly, you know, in a kind of... Spoof. Spoof, but, you know, kind of in a gentle homage sort of way. Mm. And then we did, to find out, you know, how that worked. Why did they do this with the writing, um, you know? And then we did a, a film the noir one. Yeah, the case, case. Another comedy, but that was dictated in the old days, film noir was dictated by the code. Mm. So you couldn't do certain things. Like the hero and the heroine, unless they were married, couldn't be together at the end of the film. Which is, I mean, there's oh, so much of this stuff. It's I never really, knew that. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, you, they couldn't kiss. Yeah, it's it's and really interesting. To they couldn't kiss unless, they had to have at least one foot on the floor, so they couldn't be on the bed. So there's always things <laughs> which dictated how the story went. So we really wanted to kind of, you know. Explore suppose, that. Explore that, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so we, I suppose it is kind of organic, but because we specifically want and still want to learn the, the craft, um, I suppose we've set ourselves challenges mm. to see how we do that. We're, ma we're making um, a cool. music video in, in all, uh, August, and we sort of hijacked the idea completely, and we're turning it, in a good way, uh, turning it into a German expressionism sort of story. Um, so all the kind of Doctor, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, all the big mm. shapes and all those kind of crazy characters. Um, so I suppose but, it's organic, but... Yeah, but I think, I think also um, whenever we sort of sit down to write something, because we both train as actors, it's very often character-led. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is have the idea, certainly for Two Down, we had the idea of John as a, as a character. And that's really, I think, wh where a lot of the, the plot and, and the story came from. Um, because we sort of, what we do is we as the character ask ourselves a sort of series of questions. Um, you know, what does this person do? What do they like to eat? How do they chill out? You know, like anything. Yeah. Um, just to kind of create a world, really, for them to kind of exist in. Um, so that's sort of the and starting that's what dictates point. What, what that world is, then yeah. what else happens in this world and things. So I, suppose, yeah. I don't know, the thing is, we, 
yeah, because we haven't had any of that kind of training, we always look at it from a, you know, an actor's kind of go, right, what is my backstory? Mm. Why am I at yeah. this point in the story? So we've always started it kind of that way. Yeah, suppose, yeah. and then after that, we'll um, sort of plot out a kind of skeletal structure of where we see the story going with just sort of main plot lines. Um, and then what we often find very helpful is um, we'll have cue cards you know, so, so, yeah, there's yeah. That. And, um, and any sort of major scenes that we think are kind of quite key or pivotal in the, in the, in the plot will loosely just jot down. So that what we end up with is sort of 100 or more um, cue cards that we then lay, can quite sort of physically lay out in a linear style. And it's very helpful because then you can see sort of if something's not working, you can just swap <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're sort of almost editing it, by before you get there as well you yeah. go, actually let's have this over here so let's turn that into a flashback and that can kind of you know so we can play with things we find that sort of yeah, yeah. Really and then our editor goes no let's just put it all back that way again. <laughs> that's, um, that's fine but yeah that sounds really interesting i was expecting just you know the blackboard of ideas going no ideas off the table but none no, none of that you know no <laughs> <laughs> not yet i mean but it is it is different every it is different every time isn't it yeah I mean, we, we wrote a film which we haven't made yet, The Curse of the Buxom's Trumpet, which was based on the Agad Zombies short film, and that was completely different. So we yeah. had our kind of basic idea. And our characters. And our characters. We kind of worked on those first, and these are the people who need to tell our story. And there's a big mansion house. They need to get to a ship to escape the zombie plague, 18th century. And then we sort of pl we got a big piece of Christmas wrapping paper, I think yep. it was, yep. and we just drew everything out. Went, okay, we can have a brothel, we can have a theatre, we can have all these things, and then sort of split them up. And that almost dictated where yeah, we did just dictate where basically our story. drew out a giant map. Yeah, and then they can cross over here and go that way. So that sort of plotted out the main points yeah. of, of what the story would be. So we basically make it up as we go along. <laughs> do, do do actors? You know, you say you've got experience, but the pair of you as actors, do they respond well when you can? You bring them a character like John Thomas from Two Down and say, here's that backstory. You don't need to make that up now. You know, I, we've already plotted that. Do actors respond well to that or do some people sort of thing? I mean, I think we're also very uh, open-minded and, and not really very precious about our writing um, in that we will always sort of respect what the actor brings and enjoy and that, that process of what an actor brings to a role. Um, and so, you know, if they have better ideas, then, I mean, of course, we're open to that and, and embrace oh, that. And yeah. <laughs> Sometimes um, they go, I've got a monologue now. Like, oh, <laughs> can you just say yes? <laughs> um, um, but I think, I think that's why we, we kind of do get actors wanting to come and work with us, because we write for actors. Um, mm. Yeah, I think, I think sometimes in, in that we allow a sort of actor, you know, if they say, well, actually, I think, you know, is it, can I say it like that? Mm. Um, quite often we'll go, yeah, yeah, of course. There, are, there have been times, though, when we've almost been a bit too lenient in that. And in the sort of rehearsal process or, or in the, even in the shoot, you know, it seems to be working. And then you get to the edit and you go, oh, actually, yeah. that line was kind of really Hasn't important. happened very often, but occasionally like, oh, And, God. you know, as writers, I think we need to learn sometimes to kind of be a bit stronger in kind of our stance of going. It's, because our, our scripts never entirely finish, really. Nope. I mean, you always, there's always famous things, you know, it's never finished, just abandoned, or you know, the same with the film edited, you have to stop somewhere. But we, we still work, we have rehearsals before things, so we almost rehearse it like a piece of theatre as well, and do the scenes, and we can work with things. Because you can only do so much as a writer, and then the actors are going to bring all that experience and all that knowledge, mm. everything of that themselves. And if it is going to start to develop and change, yes, and if, if they stick to exactly what we've written, things are going to jar, you know, so it's good to be flexible and go, okay, well, you found something which we never even thought about, so let's explore that. Well, certainly in Two Down in the rehearsals, we actually ended up cutting quite a lot mm. of the script um, just through the rehearsal process because we realised, actually, it's not, it's not needed, it's not necessary, it can be done with that look. Yeah, you'd see an actor and they've probably been working on it and they kind of do <coughs> something and you go, oh, well, that's just told that entire story. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a visual medium, so if that tells you the whole thing rather than four lines, yeah. that's scrap them. I can imagine that could be quite difficult at times. So if you're in love <laughs> with a scene and you're like, I don't want to lose it, I don't want to lose it. We know, well, not I particularly. Think, no, I think because cause we're then, not that precious about art. At the end of the day, it's the story and, and the film. That's the most important thing. And if something has to go... It serves it better. Yeah, thank then, you. And, you know, and is going to make it a better film at the end of the day. Hmm. 
then you know I think Let's do it. I suppose yeah. that's because we're not just writers. You know, we're, we're we're filmmakers. Yes. So the writing is the kind of the bone or the beginnings of things, but that's the bigger picture. So you've got to keep that in mind. And if fiddling here makes this better, then do it. Then it makes it better. Okay. Yeah. So you finished your screenplay. You to you touched briefly on it there, but my script says I'm now to ask. <laughs> so you've screen finished the screenplay. Right. What now? Have a drink. <laughs> uh, finishing a screenplay is a mission in itself. So well, and as you said, yourself. it's never really finished. And well, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, next, it comes the the scheduling and the bud budgeting. So. Um, for Two Down, we uh, wrote it specifically as a low, low budget script. So therefore, we knew in the writing that we wanted to keep the schedule, the, the shoot time, down to a minimum. Um, so we, we sort of went in with the idea of only shooting for two weeks. Um, and then, and that's actually what we did in the end. Um, and so we sort of broke it down, scheduled it, realized that, yes, we could do it in two weeks, just never do it again. But, that, uh, but then we wrote. Then Every location is about 22 locations from our one. We went, oh, we'll have one location. Ended up being 22. And, but we wrote it, everything was in about a two mile sort of radius. Yeah, so it was very e so we knew that easy we could to manage. So you could set things up. Anyway, so I'm yeah. skipping ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on, sorry. Um, and then in order to keep the budget down, we also uh, knew of places, of, of locations that we could get for free or for very low cost or you know and so for things like you know restaurants and stuff like that it would be when they were closed or you know and, mm. and very early mornings or late at night pubs, that sort of thing. Pubs at six o'clock in the morning is very weird. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then after after that we then basically worked out the budget for Two Down um, which was the bare minimum that we could go to shoot and pay people and that was the money that we had, so we didn't have any of the budget for the post when we filmed it. Right. We also um, kept costs down by everyone being on exactly the same kind of wage. So me as the director yeah. was paid the same as the spark. Yeah. Right. So everyone gets a little percentage of if it ever makes any money. Um, <laughs> when? Can. When it makes money. Yeah, when it makes money, yeah. thank you. Um, so this was also quite nice because it was sort of everyone's film. It's one way to keep the cost down, but you know, if I'm on the same wage as you know, the guy who's picking up the Apple boxes and things, then it's it's everyone's film, yeah. which is really, I, I, I like, has that kind of theatre family feel as well, which is nice. Yeah. And it also keeps your costs down. <laughs> um, and then, and so then after we filmed it, we then sort of found the money uh, for the post side of things um, via a very good deal with a brilliant company called Onsite. Um, but then for the film that we're working on at the moment, Drag Pies, um, it, we're going at it for a diff completely different point of view. Because um, well, there's, there's no one way of, of doing any of this as well. No. That's, what we, that's one of our major learning curves. Like, no one has a secret recipe or anything. Yeah, of and how we were to like, do how it. do we do this? And like, well, however you can make it work, that's <laughs> how it works. But then, I mean, there's kind of obviously more standard templates. So, on the next one, Drag Pies, which is a comedy heist with drag queens, yeah. basically. Kind of um, Ocean's Eleven, Priscilla Queen of the Desert type of. Thing. Yeah, um, we're sort of we're going at, a, at it at a much uh, more sort of regular, I guess, standard kind of approach. In that uh, we are getting a sales company attached first. We're getting the cast attached, um, which will help with the financing, um, and sort of go yeah, going down a, a sort of much more kind of traditional line. But again, we've never sort of done approached the sort of institutions for money as well. As well. I mean, with Two Down, it's always we wanted it specifically really tiny, tiny budget. So we have as much control as we Creative could because it's, yeah. it's our first proper you know, film that we've written and, and produced and everything. So that was the way to kind of keep control because as soon as you start getting big boys in, they go, no, <laughs> no just fair enough, it's their money. Yeah, exactly. Kind of a character called John Thomas, do you know what that is? Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, like the best interviewees, you've actually gazumped my next just, question. Oh no, 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 no. it's perfect, perfect. it's perfect. I won't, I'll read it just for the audience so they know what it would have been. Sorry. I would have said, smile, <laughs> the film is made, the hard work is done. Now you shit yourself. Tell us about you how, uh, tell us, good thing I didn't have to read this. <laughs> tell us how you handle post and the eventual release and distribution. So let's talk about release well, and distribution. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well. That's, that's, again, that's sort of different every time. So like with Drag Pies, we're going to get sales people in at the beginning to kind of help shape that. This way, we went the other way around completely, did everything by ourselves to then go, ooh, do you like it? Yeah. Um, and thankfully, so there's a company in Los Angeles which has taken it on. Um, but we've always wanted to do kind of 
for a film like this, you, festivals are kind of so important, and festivals like this are amazing to um, <laughs> oh, <there. laughs> um, to kind of you know to give it a kind of a platform and to see we'll see if we're doing it right for a start. But that kind of helps then get it into the scene and people. You know, sales companies want to know if people like it and want to see it. You know, it's a difference to them just kind of watching it by themselves and seeing it with real human beings. Not that sales companies aren't, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so we did it completely opposite way around. Um, and then hopefully the sales company will then, they trot around to Cannes and Berlin and mm. everywhere with the film and say, do you like this? And hopefully sell the territories, yeah. Yeah, exactly, which could take bloody ages, to be honest. Um, so we did, we, because we, a few years ago, we adapted an 18th century play again. Um, Missing Her Teens, you mentioned Missing it. Missing Her Teens, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of more of a television movie. It was actually designed as filmed a as a TV pilot, yeah. maybe we could make more. There's all these, there's hundreds of these one-hour um, afterpieces, kind of you know, people in wigs, kind of follows a kind of a similar young girl, three suitors, they fight it out type of thing, and that's it. It's about basically the story. Um, so we made that, and then the Canadian company went, well, we can actually sell this as a feature film. Yeah. So oh, that's brilliant. And now they're kind of doing. Well, we won are selling it in Canada, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just been released in North America. So we'll see how it goes. But I mean, we filmed that. Six years ago? No. Was it? No, it wasn't six Five. years ago. Five. Was it? Four. <laughs> it was a while, it was a while <laughs> ago. It was a while ago. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just being released now. It, you know, it's, a long, it's a long process. Mm. I think people don't realise quite how long. You know, when you see, sort of see films come out and actors being interviewed about them, they're actually That's thinking... That's pretty time What did I do? Two years ago? Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that character. Yeah. Uh-huh. Got it. You know, I think it, it's, it's a much longer process, I think, than people sort of first think. Which is also why festivals are important to kind yeah. of, you know, help keep help. the ground swell keep, yeah, and yeah, the excitement about the film. Yeah. So this is, the, this is the first time you're actually going to, you're going to go see your film tonight, aren't you? Well, yes. with, with real people, yeah. With real people, yeah, yeah. yeah. not sales yeah. people, yeah. not sales well, no, robots. We, we, had a we had a screening <laughs> in London and, no, I mean, because it's completely different. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. just looking Industry, and they know in yeah. 15 minutes whether it's something they, oh, we have something a little bit similar or it's not our type of thing. And it's just, it's, it's horrible. It's a horrible, horrible mm. 90 minutes. To be honest, I mean, it went down very well, but it just, I just never sweated so much, <laughs> I think. Cut that out, sorry. Um, but then it was over in Los Angeles and then Amsterdam, and apparently it went down very well, but we, we weren't there. We weren't so. there, so no, it's really exciting. This will be the first, well, Hope. exciting slash really nice. you like it. Um, yeah, to be, to be in a room with people, hopefully, you know, film lovers and things, so that'll be fun. Wonderful. Now, to the script. Sorry. Tori and Matt, it has been great to listen to your insights into the creative process, experiences, and advice. I'm now going to have to split you up. You're an amazing partnership, it says, and put you both on the spot. <laughs> I'm a gentleman, so ladies first. Sorry, Matt. Tori, in the style of the great James Lipton and the legacy of the even greater Bernard Pivot, had to Google that name, who for 26 years did this better in his own words than James himself, apparently again, according to Mr. Lipton, better than anyone. So we'll take his word for that. Okay. Tori, what's your favourite word? Uh, bewildering. Bewildering? Yeah. And your least favourite word? Lush. Lush. <laughs> <laughs> what turns you on? I didn't write these. <laughs> Other than brandy. Um, I think uh, I'd say hard work. Hard work. And what turns you off? Ego. Ego. What sound or noise do you love? Cats purring. Oh. Mm, my cat. <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate? Oh, um, okay. So, <laughs> you know, uh, just before someone's about to spit, Ooh, like on the street oh, or no. something, that yeah. kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite curse word? Bugger. Bugger. Yeah. Great choice. Thank you. What profession, other than yours, would you like to attempt? This is a good one. Um, I, think, I think it would be either uh, like a detective or a spy, like a secret agent or something. <laughs> Brilliant. <Yeah. laughs> and what would you never do? What profession would you never do, under any circumstances? Uh, we were talking about this earlier, actually. Uh, an agent. An agent? Yes. As an, an acting agent. An yeah. yeah. acting agent, yeah. yeah. My word. Very difficult job. Total respect. And Tori, finally, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, D 
do you want to go back down and do it all again? That'd be a great one, wouldn't it? Wow. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that, Tori. Tori Hart, everyone. Thank you. Hooray. <laughs> it says here, the audience wet their knickers and applaud. No pressure. <laughs> Matt. Oh, no pressure for me. OK, yeah. OK, Matt, mm. what is your favourite word? Sausage. Sausage? <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Blackadder, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, was it Blackadder? A yeah. sausage! <laughs> I think. It's, we it's a great well, word. It's a two down it's a great as well. Got, I don't know if you remember, there's a whole thing about sausage. I do remember. That's where it came from. Is yes. it really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, well. His favorite I think word. it's a funny word. You, <laughs> genuinely? What's, so, what's your least favorite word then? <sighs> that, there we go. Um, extinguish. Extinguish? Oh. I don't know why. Is so it just because of the meaning? Probably, more mm. than the sound. Mm. Sorry. What turns you on? Imagination. Ooh. And what turns you off? I can't think of a word. Uh, I suppose laziness. Laziness, right. So what sound or noise do you love? I was thinking about this then. I'm not a massive cricket fan, but the sound, you know when people go, you can hear in the background kind of like... <laughs> it just makes me think of summer. You like, like, you like the sound of British politeness as well. Like, <laughs> basic, no, like, but it's the kind of, you know, willow one wicket type. You know that kind of... PG Woodhouse. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, just you go, OK, PG it's Woodhouse. summer. Or, you know, you know, yeah. or Wimbledon in the background. Sorry, only one, only one answer, sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Not that strict, but you are losing points now. Sorry. <laughs> what sorry. sound or noise do you hate? Uh, it's actually another kind of mouth, chewing with your mouth open. Oh, oh yeah, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> What's your favourite curse word? Bollocks. Bollocks. Yeah. Bugger and bollocks. Yeah. Oh, I liked it. It's, <laughs> it's the B, it's the B. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's just reminded my English teacher of that. <laughs> 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 what, uh, what profession would you do if you could? I was genuinely thinking about this when I was about 13. Um, the, the Coopers, the people who make the barrels for, for whiskey. I went to a distillery when I was really tiny oh. and I was watching them all kind of these craftsmen. I was like, that's brilliant. So that. There we go. Oh, Which I might still do if you know, this doesn't work out. Oh, I'm sure it will. <laughs> Two down. Yeah, thanks. Are you moving to the Highlands of Scotland? Yeah, then? why not? Make okay. some barrels. Yeah. And you can be a tiny spine. <laughs> <laughs> On my own. Yeah. <laughs> Hiding in the heather. Yeah, but you know, you do it very well. So what would you never do? Sorry, what profession would you never do? What profession would I never do? I did, I, don't, I did have an answer when you were talking. Oh. I no longer remember it. Um, what? I don't know. <laughs> Traffic warden. Traffic warden. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a good one. Matt. Sorry if anyone is. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't even, yeah. Matt, finally, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Welcome, Mr. Butler. Uh, everyone's on set. You've got Laurence Olivier. They're, everyone, they're all here waiting for you. Go. That'd be nice. And some more names. And some more names. And some more other names. I oh, know, I can't remember. Right, Matt, well, that was brilliant. Thank you. Matthew Butler, no, everyone. No, of right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. The floor is now yours, Tori and Matt. Questions from the audience? And there's someone going around with a microphone as we speak. So does anyone have any questions? No, we've talked at them for so no, long. No, yeah. no, I was going to say. It, we've done it. I actually <laughs> can't. Tired them out. Falling asleep. <laughs> any questions at all? You don't have to think of any, don't worry. It's all right. I've got one. If oh, OK, go on. So John Thomas, yes. absolutely fantastic character. You've not seen it yet, but when you do, you'll be like, yeah, Tom was right. Um, absolutely fantastic character. Where, did, where was the inspiration for that sort of... I don't want to spoil anything. Well, no, seen don't it, spoil so. anything. But also, the initial person, we can't probably really say, because I was working on a play, and this person is... Yes. Yeah. So, very, very well-known. Brilliant, brilliant actor. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But, well, you know, mm. well, I yeah, 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 don't want to spoil it if you are going to go and see it. Like some of John's kind of quirks and things, it kind of came from this person. I'll tell you later. Oh. But, um, <laughs> I can't have it on camera, really. No, but, uh, no, lovely, lovely person, brilliant actor, but some of his kind of strange quirks and oddities we kind of yes. mined from him. So that Gave us the inspiration. Gave us the inspiration yeah. in the nicest possible way. Yeah. Um, can't say any more than that on camera, so sorry. 
can tell you afterwards if you want, but um, yeah, I think that's kind of where, where he started. Well, we knew we yeah. wanted to do, because we love all the kind of 70s sort of films, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you film, know a film called The Conversation with Gene Hackman. So Two Down has, because as we were developing that, we kind of that went, oh, that sort of, you know, this kind of loner character on the outside, you know, kind of in, all these things kind of whirring around him. Yeah. Um, and what we love about the conversation is the pace of it. That sort of, that kind of... Yeah, well, the, 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 the pacing. So Two Down has, does have that kind of slight 70s sort of pacing, but also the music and grading helps. But, um, <laughs> but like, like in the conversation, and John, you know, it's, it's a very kind of linear character. He has to stay on this kind of very straight sort of path. And then, like in the conversation, things start to kind of spiral out of control. So we started getting arty. So there are all these like circles and spirals and things in the background of Two Down, if you watch it again. Um, what was the question? Where did you come from? Yes. Yeah, so that kind of, <laughs> that, but that idea, I think, is what kind of um, was our sort of kernel to yep. kind of really, uh, we wanted to see who, what would happen with this very linear, straight character when regimented. the world, yeah, very regimented. When his world's yeah. turned upside down, yeah. basically. And sort of the, that character, and I do, like, he was sort of, I absolutely, was the takeaway point of the film for me. I was like, I need to see more John Thomas, essentially. Um, never thought I'd say that. But, but <laughs> um, uh, more Not John, gets more the John, John Thomas. Thomas joke as well. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah. When you, when you when, like, at first, I was like, is that like an old like sort of you know schoolboy joke about who oh, will call him John Thomas in my story, and the teacher will never know. But um, yes. the yes. sort of the <laughs> when you cast John Thomas, was that a difficult sort of because the character's eccentric, but at the same time, sort of regimented and as you mentioned was that a difficult casting process or did you have someone in mind well um to be honest we originally wrote john as being sort of slightly older and actually what's so incredible about alex as an actor um is that he completely morphs um and completely morphed into the character of john thomas i mean it's in, an incredible performance and he um looks so much older than he actually is <laughs> um, and i think even he was shocked when he saw it he was kind of like wow i, I actually have it but then like that was why we because it is such it is a really hard part to get that kind of balance between mm. you know all the different sort of sides of john thomas and even though we wanted kind of older alex because you know he's, he's a theater actor as well so it has that kind of muscular dexterity to sort of sort of do that so that's why we kind of ended up bringing making him sort of younger because it, it was hard to be honest yeah, yeah. i can certainly imagine yes it was. i would i would say the thing that aged him for me is that incredible mustache yeah <laughs> like it is it was pretty awesome he was very happy about that his wife who's was also not. in the film was not happy about <laughs> it at all um no but you said I mean, there's a flashback scene as well in um so as soon as he shaves it off because it's kind of obviously like five years previously but it was actually about half a year later when we shot that bit and he's sort of lost about 10 years just by shaving just yeah. by losing Amazing, that, that yeah. tiny little mustache and I'm, I must say as well, mustache. the mustard yellow turtleneck as well oh, yeah. you know the most well actually that was partly I forgot as well there's even on a lot of the pictures that they're sort of using it's him with his kind of gun and so we worked with Alex that him John Thomas as a cat as a human being loved Roger Moore in the James Bond films, <laughs> so because he's obviously about a hitman and things, that's not a spoiler. Um, so he he take, he'd been watching far too much Roger Moore James Bond things. So there's always the references it's slightly models from that. Yep. Brilliant. Sorry, <laughs> that was. I'm just rambling about. No, it. Sorry. it's fantastic. It's one. So you mentioned there that you know John, you thought John Thomas was a big fan of Roger Moore. Have you ever been writing a character and sort of you've had a character beat or something within that sort of character you're writing and you thought I love that but I can't keep it in the film, or do you just sort of keep it and just, just never use it? What, as in if we've sort of yeah. borrowed things? No, no, not if you've borrowed things. So say, for example, I'm just thinking of um, Simon Pegg, and I'm completely blanking on the... Uh, the Nick Frost? N not Nick no, Frost. Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright. When you see their process, they've got a blackboard, and they have a full thing, and they've got little beats coming off it of things that they wanted the character to have, but they right. didn't... Right, and they just, it just didn't quite yeah, work. Yeah, it didn't quite it? work. Does that... We, yeah, well, I mean, Al and I spent a lot of time chatting in cafes and things, and we did come up with, like, I can't remember them now, because it was years ago, yeah. but ridi slightly ridiculous ideas of what he could be wearing and things, and, and then you and Ginny, our art director, came in and said, no, no, no. no. <laughs> you can't have silly hats and that kind of thing. Yeah, so, I mean, we, d we did, because also I, I was then obsessed with this kind of linear and then spiral ideas, mm. so I was like, everything must be lines and then circles and things and his costume, and so that kind of stuff had to yeah. be a little more subtle about it. toned down. Yeah. Um, but within his character as well, I mean, like kind of movements that. and things mm. as well. I'm sure there are character points that we've kind of come we, up we with. Were, and we, 
we're with Alex. We, we were kind of talking about like, the way he moves and things, and we were getting like, possibly too theatrical. Quite about animalistic. Stuff. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, so we, yeah. But then that's kind of the acting process. You do all that, and then you go internalize it and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> would be fun though. What? Well, I don't know, to just like, to do a project where you kind of let just the actors have just like full reign <laughs> <laughs> on it and make it as big and mad as you I'm want. not sure the money people would allow no. us. No, no, we might not. have to do that on our own. <laughs> Anyone had any time to think of a question? Yep. Oh, oh. at the front. Oh, oh. there we go. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Hello. Um, Hello. I'm looking forward to seeing your film tonight. Thank you. Um, you're an uh, acting, writing... Oh, yeah, hello. Director. Sorry? <laughs> hello. We saw Touch last night. We oh, it was brilliant. Brilliant. Too. Really, really, yeah. really loved Thank it. you. It'll be good to chat later. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you're actors, writer, directors, so you co-direct as well? No. Okay. That's, so that's and false I, advertising. I've, I've stepped I away from the acting direct. side. Okay. Of, yeah. So yeah. I wanted to ask about how you go about producing your films. I, are you, do you produce them as well, or yes. do you, and do you have someone else come in and just kind of yes. manage it for a while, like a line producer or something? But y yeah, so um, in fact, Gareth Jones, who's sitting oh, at the back, uh, who's going to be talking a bit later, uh, he was uh, one of our executive producers oh, on so EP and co-producer, co yeah. sorry, um, on uh, uh, Two Down. And so Gareth worked uh, with us very much on on sort of negotiating the post deal and that side of things because. Um, being new, we're sort of still learning how it all works. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah. for two yeah. down, I mean, we did a lot of it ourselves with with help and kind of sort of mentoring, and that's probably the last yeah. time we'll do that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, so but it was specifically small and contained. Now, obviously, we get you know making steps forwards. Then we all the help we can get. Yeah, bringing on other producers. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Certainly for yeah. Drag Pies, our next our next, yes, next yeah. project, we will co-produce with other producers. Okay. Good. Um, and good. Also, no, well, no, no, I don't I mean good. Film, yeah. Sorry, I just think thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah. Um, and also, what was the budget? You said it was. You wrote it for low, which is obviously very important when you write for low budget. Um, I was just saying that like, Touch actually had tons of locations as well, and it just yeah. drove me insane. And we're not. You know, allowed, we can tell you afterwards because our sales yeah. company said we're not allowed to say we. It was. We know what yours was, and it was a lot less less than that. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, and we can tell you afterwards. But yeah, sure. It's tiny. It's yeah, really tiny. and then you but know, watch the film and then judge, and then maybe we can. Tell you. But I mean, <laughs> no, it's shot, no, it's shot no, in twelve I mean, days. But as we know, low budgets don't necessarily mean low production value or low sure. quality. No, well, that's why so, we want, don't yeah. want people to tell people maybe until sort of afterwards, so sure, you can kind of yeah. and go, no, really, you did it. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's like God, three you're and six. No, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I understand. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, there we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, how do you go about finding actors for your films? With it being low budget, do you go through agents, or is it just like self-advertising? Okay. Yeah, it's a really good question. So, um, two down, uh, we knew all the actors. To be honest, we'd either worked with them before or trained with them. Um, uh, with drag pies that we're working on at the moment, and with other films that we've got cast attached to. Uh, we've had a casting director, Jane Anderson, who's sitting behind you there. Sorry, Jane. Uh, the wonderful Jane, brilliant casting director. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so, so a casting director is it, essential for sort of getting key names attached. Um, we also uh, sort of are in a fortunate position that we have an agent that represents us as a production company, uh, the Artist Partnership. And they are also an acting agent. So what they are developing is a literary arm, which includes uh, people like us, who create work, and then they will then be the f their actors will be the first stop port of call where they will take the scripts to, and and see if they can fit. So it's it's it, how it's working is it's sort of an in-house creative process. But then obviously we then cast outside of the artist partnership as well. And saying that the, the idea has always been that. What we've always tried to do, even with the sort of the short films of, you know, getting Ian McKellen to pop up at the end, that sort of thing, is to give. Cause, you know, we we are well. I was an actor, Tori is an actor. It's really fucking hard um, business. So the idea yeah. was always to try and get new young, brilliant people yeah. in as well. And create so, work for for new. Yeah, which is still what we're going to try and do with drag pies. We're going, you know, you Absolutely. you get the people in who are going to make sure you get finance, 
and you then know, like sort of three, four roles, key roles that you get names attached to, and then the rest you can cast from unknowns, and that's what we've always sort of aimed to do, and still. Which aim hopefully to do. the bigger we get, and the more we move on, we can we'll have the, more of a. The more um, sort of control you have over that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two, two down was always because it was the project it was, and it was so such a small amount of time and money. Um, we we did pick actors that we'd worked with, either as filmmakers or actors as well, because it's sort of just, well, as me, as, me as a director as well, it took that kind of pressure off as like, you know, is this person going to be able to do what we ask of them? You know, we, 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 knew, we picked people we knew that could work. So speed it up, I guess. Yeah, well, ha, yeah, and took that kind of, huh, away yeah. from me, my job, well, a little also, bit. Also, we just wanted to give our friends some work. Well, yeah. <laughs> Because it's, you know, I mean, it's, it should be an enjoyable experience and it's great, you know, working with I've people. I've always wanted know. to make, we're going on for hours now, I'm sorry. I know, this is sorry. great, I'm, I'm just going to sit here. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always stuff. had this kind of slightly bonkers idea of having kind of like a repertory film company. So like in the old days of theatre rep where you have a pool of actors and you have different projects. I mean, I'm talking sort of 50, I mean, it's probably going to happen when I'm dead, but, um, <laughs> you know, we'll start the process. You know, you have a pool of people, not just cast, crew, everyone, and... You know, so you might have three sound people, two or three cinematographers, and then you, you know, you kind of expand your pool and you take from those, and you kind of, I think, the idea is that you can create sort of better and better work if you kind of, I was a cinematographer, because I'm still learning the technical process, I mean, I'm hopefully there now, but, you know, sort of learning, having someone who you kind of have cultivated a relationship with, I think you can get past all those sort of barriers that you to have with new people and, mm. and things and you can kind of get to it might be talking absolute nonsense but it's a nice idea anyway yeah. um, you know you can get to further places and better better film and everything I don't know what I'm saying now <laughs> <laughs> Saturday morning now. anything else from the audience no, we oh there yeah. we go oh. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, you might have touched upon it a little bit, but you know that they say that every time you, you make a film, you kind of make three films. There's the film you write, the one you shoot, and the one you edit. Uh, so the one we're going to see tonight is the edited version. I was just wondering if, if that was the case with Two Down, that you, there were sort of these processes where you had to let go of certain things when, once it came to the filming, and then in the edit as well, or was it so tailored to the low budget that, no. that you didn't have to do that? We didn't a huge amount to be honest um, get rid of a, a, no. a huge amount um, I, I think by the time we got this, the shooting script because we'd rehearsed it we'd actually already kind of edited quite a lot of what needed to be edited so in a, in a extent of like how much we shot so actually we were quite economical in how much was was actually shot and because we just didn't have the time we didn't have the but luxury I'm quite pedantic is the wrong word but I you know I have very strong kind of, um, hello, sorry, over there, um, kind of vision. But as in visual, you know, I, I know what I would like, so I storyboard everything to within an inch of its life. Get that done, and then you can, if you have the time, you can go and play around with things if you come up with better ideas. But also because we like to rehearse almost as a theatre piece, whilst that's happening, I was practising, you know, kind of filming things, go, this is going to work to there, da 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 So it sort of sp it sped the process up a little bit, but I knew that these are the shots we absolutely have to have when we're filming, because we didn't have the time um, to sort of get it wrong particularly. Yeah. So I think, yeah, out of necessity, we didn't really lose that much, did we? No. I don't think. No, I that don't sort think so. of answer the question? What was the question? <laughs> sort other, of. other than the fight um, scenes. The fight scenes we edited, obviously, quite, quite a lot. Um, Shot quite yeah. a lot, edited quite a lot. I mean, I suppose the, the script originally, it was more dialogue. Mm -hmm. It was much more dialogue heavy, and then throughout rehearsals, it, was, it became something else. But then once we got to that point, then what we filmed was pretty much the original yeah. idea. Especially visually as well. That's just because I'm a bit strange like that. <laughs> Any more from the audience? We've rambled you to death. I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> One of the people on the camera, how are we doing for time? Still good. Oh, we're doing well. Right, wonderful. In that case, let's keep talking. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> wow. uh, just one last question. So the... You mentioned it before, and I've completely blanked on the title now, but Drag Queens Committing Crimes is the yes. next Drag Pies. Drag, Drag Pies. Pies. At the moment. Is the next project. Yeah, that's the working title. Um, Magpies. Well, apparently they steal things, but apparently they research and they actually don't, so that's a bit... 
That's buggered our title, isn't it? Slightly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no. yeah, thieving drag queens. Never let the truth. Someone said they do. Yeah. That's what I yeah, thought. And then someone things. said they're they, attracted to yeah. shiny things. And then yeah. someone said, exactly. "Oh, they don't really." Yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Even if they it don't, works. never let the truth get in the way. No. Well, exactly. Uh, exactly. So, exactly. You know. Yes. Um, so, when can we expect to see that then? Well, we're hopefully filming at the end of the year. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's the, the plan. plan, and we're kind of on track, I think, for that. Yeah. Um, it's sort of loosely based on what's happening in Soho at the moment. Um, so we're sort of working with Safe Soho, um, and it is about a troupe of drag queens who um, their <coughs> favourite bar is closed um, because of the gentrification and the redevelopment that's happening within Soho at the moment. Um, and so they sort of set out on a revenge path and they... Uh, it starts with Mark, doesn't it? Yeah, they link up with Mark, who is uh, this young family chap who has, is sued by the businessman our evil guy our evil businessman who uh <laughs> and he basically loses everything he loses his home he loses his um company um and so he kind of s true revenge well, then, and, kind of and our evil guy this. then sort of because he's an absolute shitbag um <laughs> he's evil that's the point of it he then goes and buys up some of it and he's auctioning everything off the, our good guy and then our bad chap well, they don't realise it's him, sort of buys up loads of his stuff. It's more of a kind of a... <laughs> um, so then he, once they realise that, he sets off on the revenge path, and then his sister's... To steal back what, yeah. what he's... he's sort these, of these pictures, taken basically. From him. So it's kind of that Ocean's Eleven-y, but kind of uh, Thomas Crown affair. It's kind yeah. of, you know, it's art theft, basically. That's how it starts off. Um, and he, he enlists his brother-in-law, Charlie, who is a drag queen, and his drag troupe to help him do, do it. So th yes, they're yes. sort of the entertainment for the they evening. They infiltrate this and the diversion. party of the bad guy to kind of get in there, swap the paintings, that sort of stuff. Um, that's it. But yeah, it's, it's when they find out that the drag queens, when they find out when that what he's doing, this bad guy is doing to Soho as well. We should maybe explain that sort of thing as well. Um, oh, you have, haven't you? Yeah. OK, yeah. <laughs> if you were listening, yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, um, yeah. But anyway, that's hopefully end of the end of the year. I must say, it sounds absolutely fantastically bizarre. Thank you. I'm just going to pitch you <laughs> one idea, right? Yeah. Okay. Hit okay. You've said you've got the big shit bag, right? Yes. yes. What if link that to Two Down and you create? It's all the rage these days. These shared universes, Marvel, you know, all that. You create. It's Harry, Harry Montague. There you go. I like it. Yeah, and you create the Tory and Matt verse. <laughs> I like that. There you go. In a non-egotistical yeah. way. Um, We've already got Conlon attached, yeah. so, you know, I mean... We'll give you credit for that one. <laughs> Excellent. Change his role. <laughs> Love it. Right, well, I think that's all we've got time for today. If there's any more questions from the audience... Nope. Or oh. talk to us if you want, if you don't want to yeah. do the public embarrassment part of it. Tori and Matt, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.